Jürgen, in the past week at various points, it's looked like you could have brought in three different midfielders. So how does Endo compare to the other two? Um, first of all, I'm really happy to be finally going to announce we have an agreement with the club and the player, um, which is really cool. Um, I'm absolutely happy uh, about having Wataru in now. Um, I am from Germany. I watch a lot of Bundesliga. I know him since he um, is at Stuttgart. I liked him pretty much from the start when he started playing there. The little problem with this, I think it's like a, if you want a little bit of late bloomer. And usually for us, for the way our owners see, see it, um, he was already too old when he joined Stuttgart. <laughs> um, but I obviously have a different view on that and um, how I said, always liked him. Yes, and the last week was obviously a, a tricky one, no, no doubt about that. But um, that's when you have a problem, you can um, stick to the problem or you find a solution. I'm more, more than happy to have, to have the solution. And comparing Footballing wise, a similar profile, similar position, same position if you want, similar profile. Um, a really, a really good footballer. Um, I think he's five foot ten, but probably jumps to the ceiling. It's not so difficult, but jumps to the ceiling. Like that's good um, in the air. A real, uh, really good in general defensive challenges. He loves it. Tactically, really smart, closing down the, the right gaps and players. Um, good football on top of that, big heart, desire. There's a, re a really good package, uh, to be honest. So I'm really happy to have him. Just on Caicedo and Lavia, though, what conversations did you have with them? Was it texts, phone calls, meetings? And is there a sense that you've been left with a feeling let down by them? There's actually nothing to say about, as long as there's absolutely nothing to say about the uh, transfers. The transfer business is like that. You talk to people, to players, to agents, whatever, clubs, and sometimes it works out and sometimes not. I think that's a, the general thing, how it works out, and there's nothing else to say about. From my point of view, I think all the things will happen will be said in these kind of conversations. When and if you have them, they stay then between me and the specific other part, um, so nothing to say about that really. Just on any further activity in the transfer window, are you likely to still be active in the market? And I take it as well, you're not likely to lose any of your key players during this window either, because obviously there's been speculation linking Alisson with interest from Saudi Arabia as well as well. The window is open, and I'll say then. Pretty much everything can happen. I, um, on the outgoing side, from my side, nothing will happen. But um, I learned in this window a lot of things, so we will see that um, incoming. Still time, so let's have a look, and that's what we will do. Just on the football side of things. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think there was a bigger contrast last season. Nine nil at home, victory. One nil. Oh, Bournemouth! What yeah. Were you expecting this time around against Bournemouth? Yeah. Something in between. <laughs> um, so it's not a fun game, but I think the, the the new manager stands for for a specific style of play. If you if you did your research, you will find out that he you could have found out that he's. Uh, it's no no coincidence that um, the Bournemouth board thought about him and brought him in. He did an exceptional job in his last club um, with a pretty. Do you use the word unconventional? Is it? Yeah, like way, if you want. Um, he, I like to use in the past very often the word organized chaos, but he obviously uh, um, likes not only the word, so is organizing the chaos as well. So that's um, it's, it's, it's a tough one. So they will go for it. That's how they did in the first game now. They will go for it. They will press us um, properly, and on top of that, they have a, an offensive approach. Yeah, if you let them play, they will play. 
If not, they have an idea how to um, get in behind the line. That's the idea they have. It's a pretty, it's not the most complicated football idea, but it's a good one. And um, yeah, but it's the first home game. Maybe we should not forget that for since a long time. To be honest, when you start a preseason, a lot of things you 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 don't need immediately because you need the time. Um, to work on it, but the first home game is not one of them. It's really the one thing you cannot wait for, and that's exactly how it is. Uh, we missed Anfield, missed the atmosphere. As we know, they probably will ask about that as well. There are a few little problems, but there's still a, a wonderful stadium there, um, and all the rest will be sorted. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure the people are excited as well and happy as well to see us again. And so let's 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 use that as well. Yes, it's Premier League and early in the season there are no favourites for nothing. It's just you have to be ready, you have to, to fight, you have to run, you have to play, you have to shoot, you have to tackle all these kind of things and that's what I want to see. Um, is Mo back to his usual smiley self this week after he was substituted the other day? He didn't seem too happy about coming off against you. That's now a week ago, isn't it? So um, I would say he's back to he had a super training week. I think that's fair to say, absolutely super training week. Um, and I hope he can take that into the game. Um, besides that, nothing else to say. So I think this story was already directly after the game, and since then, nothing else happened. You've been in the position yourself when you come into a brand new club and it's a new culture. And how difficult is it to, to get a handle on a new team and a new culture and set your stall out to get the players doing exactly what you want to do? I have no idea because I only can say how difficult it was for me, but that's, 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 that's not, but that says nothing. That's me with my limits and all these kind of things. So um, it took me, it took time for me, of course. We kind of came in the middle of the season, which is completely different to. Um, uh, Coming in at the end of a season or, or, or for the start of a new season, um, that's that's different, obviously. And I, I'm, I don't expect any kind of necessary ad uh, adjustments from between Bournemouth and the league and or the manager and the league and, and stuff like this. They are now together for five, six, seven weeks. I don't know exactly, and that's long enough, definitely long enough um, to get used to each other. And there's no, that's no advantage, no disadvantage. That's just a fact. Yeah, again, some good contributions last week from uh, both of your debutants in midfield, Dominic Zaboslai and Alexis McAllister. How do you think they, in particular, can benefit from, from your, your new signing, Endo, given him he'll be able to play in a defensive role where Alexis had to fill in for the most part last week in that with his not his best position? It is in a moment his best position. In moments, I mean, possession, that's it for sure, it's, it's cool for him. But, um, um, but let's go back to the start of your question, maybe. Um, first and foremost, both help us a lot, and they did in that game. I think it's, Dom was especially impressive physically, how he really, his work rate until the last second was immense. To be honest, I didn't expect that. It's the first game of the season, you you know, the, the players feel that much more. The most important session in the, the whole preseason so far was the game against Chelsea because of all the different things. And being there on that kind of intense level like he was until the last second is pretty special. And then you have on the other side of um, uh, Maka with a, a really fine foot, finding small spaces, finding bigger spaces, being a real creator of whatever you want, that's really helpful, but with a, a really, really good defensive game as well. Our problems didn't come from the position of Maka or whatever, or that um, rather offensive oriented players on the six, so nothing to do with it. We didn't play enough football, that was our problem. We got into a rush after the, in, after the equaliser and they scored a second goal pretty quick after each other, so that you could realise that we were not settled enough in the way we want to play. I think that's not too surprising because we it's just after preseason you always have that problem 
a little bit, but then if the game goes perfectly well in the right direction, it's good for that game. It's not that good for the game after because then you think you solved it already, everything, and you have these problems a little bit later. So what we lacked in that game was rhythm, um, especially in possession. We had 35% possession, which is an absolute joke. It should not happen. So there's no game I can imagine. It can, it can happen against City on a special day, and if it's an idea to, to do it a little bit like that, to sit a bit deeper or whatever, it's not our idea for that game, but it happened just because we were with the ball too much in a rush. So, And in that game, the two did a really good job. That helped us. And now we have the problem, what we have in the moment a little bit, is now, um, okay, Andrew is now in, and he's allowed to train this afternoon, if he's allowed to... To participate in the game tomorrow, I don't know. We will see that. Um, um, on top of that, Stefan Budget is really close, but not there yet. Um, obviously, uh, 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 we, we really count on him. Thiago and Cantara, same, slightly similar profile, obviously, <laughs> much more experienced as well, um, is in, but not there yet. Um, so we need just to give to them time. We cannot rush that. That ball will look completely different after the international break. But until then, we have super important games. So we have we have solutions for our situation, just not available in the moment. And that's why we need to to, to sort it in a in a slightly different way. And this is always an opportunity. You can always play it like that. It's the way Chelsea, the perfect moment to do it. I'm not 100 percent sure, um, but anyway, it's a it's a it's a it's a way you. In a lineup, in a setup, you can definitely play and win football games. And so, yes, everybody will benefit from a from a player whose first idea is to protect everything what we do offensively. It's involved in offensive stuff, but then it's, it's, it's the, the heart, the desire, and enjoys that as well to to clean up behind them. So, um, and of course, that will be helpful. Clear. Chelsea and Bournemouth, different teams, different personnel, but one area of concern, I think last week, and you would have looked at the game, it is in wide areas defensively, you came under a lot of pressure, down Liverpool's left in the first half, down Liverpool's right in the second half. What can you do to, to kind of alleviate that, that difficulty? Keep the ball. It's the best way. Keep the ball is the best way. You always put the quality in the Premier League. There's, I can... So um, <laughs> there, there, there are always players who have there, whoever it is. Um, and, but uh, so Chelsea, we, I'm not sure if would, this room together could now find out all the options they have um, for uh, with speed and technique on the wing, for example. So, in a in a situation, it was um, the, the, the setup they found. Uh, then a little bit later, they, they suffered with that a lot. In the beginning, we could have scored a second goal. The, the, the high position of Chilba, as an example, caused them real problems. Because we found a way into the game, found a way into, to, to, to control more a bit better. Um, but it's always you have always it's like an up and down, and you use little weaknesses here and there. Uh, it's much too early to talk about a weakness on a wing or whatever. It's just there. You have to organize it in a specific way that the balls arrive there in a mo moment when you can, when you are prepared for it. And that is the case when you don't lose the ball in moments where nobody can react on it. You know, that's a counter-attack then. In the moment you lose, you give the ball away in a, in a certain position, five, six players involved, bam, you lose, give it away. <clears throat> And that was the first two situations they had in the game, I think, were after these kind of moments. And it's a way you then still have the most players is the center, probably. That's why teams choose going down the wing, especially when you have the speed there. And that's why you struggle there from time to time. But that's not, not yet any kind of general problem or what we, what we start discussing again just because we had at one point in, in any other season a problem there. It's all about the best way to defend is always to keep the ball um, and we had we should have done that better and we did that much better in all. We worked a lot on it in our preseason games. That's really important. That is a challenge tomorrow as well, by the way, because they really press, they really go for it and it's being there calm and doing the right things and the right stuff, knowing you can lose the ball here and there um, and do it again. Um, finding rhythm and then finding direction is um, is one of the 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 questions we have to answer for tomorrow. Hi. Uh, um, yeah, uh, kind of uh, his football life always starts with um, 
vaguely underestimated situation. You know, that's uh, like, uh, for example, uh, he didn't play Russia at all, but now he's a captain of uh, our country. Uh, do you think he can do that uh, with you? I said, I said, he is uh, in his career, he's a late bloomer, definitely. And yes, he was definitely underestimated um, for a long time. Um, that's clear, but he improved every every year since he since he's on the the proper football screen. Um, it's really <laughs> all that for a footballer. If you if you have your breakthrough with 23, 24, then the years before is not is not waste of time or whatever. It's just it's the the, the preparation for all the rest of what is coming. Um, and when he came to Europe, obviously, and even started Stuttgart was not that easy. But then since he he got the opportunity, he never gave it away and, and became the player he became. And now he has, I think, 50 games for Japan and I don't know how many games for Stuttgart. So it's really, uh, it's important <laughs> for me. When you saw him, when you see him now running around here, um, there's no chance that anybody could would give him 30 years when you see him. <laughs> like, oh my God, is he allowed to drive a car? So, um, but on the on the pitch, obviously, he turns into a real in a real monster, he wants to. He wants to win balls. He wants to fight. You know all these kind of things. Plus, he's able to play football. How is that? He was on my screen for a long time already, um, and now we, we, for some reasons, we were able to do it. And I'm personally really happy about it. I cannot say differently. I'm really happy. Um, and now let's start working. So. We have this club has obviously a tradition, not a real tradition, but we had um, one of the biggest LFC legends of my time, at least, with James Milner. He arrived here when he was, I think, 29. Not that ever, anybody ever underestimated probably Millie, but probably people said in that time, I'm not sure, I was not here when he arrived, he came before me. Um, really, he's not a fixed lineup player here, there, blah, 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 and, but can play different positions. And I can tell you, without James Milner, nothing of the success we had in last years would have happened. One of the best players and characters I ever met in my life, and um, so that's fantastic. And um, Mataru is in a different way, obviously, um, but can have an, a similar impact. And um, so I'm really, I'm really happy that he's here. His one-to-one stats in Germany is phenomenal, isn't it? Sorry. His one-to-one stats in Germany is phenomenal. Yeah. 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 So yeah, how I said, you have to learn the game, then wherever, it's, wherever you start and whenever it clicks. It's just in football, we close books much too early. If a player is 18 years old and didn't have, uh, I don't know, 10 Premier League games, and we say, ah, will you really make it? And stuff like this. So that's the world we are living in. It's absolutely no problem, really no problem. We, our job, my, I, my job is not really to explain or whatever. But our job is to make, happen, to make it happen on the pitch and, um, and he will buy into that 100%. He's experienced enough. Um, we will see how much time it will need to get used to what we do. Um, but, yeah, we need him, that's clear. Um, and and he wants to help from the beginning, and that's, uh, that's absolutely cool. I, I really, I'm, I'm really happy that these kind of stories are still possible in this crazy world of football, to be honest. It's, it's, it really feels just right. It's right, it's like, okay. Um, yeah, that's a good thing. Um, and now let's, let's go from here. Thank you, Nasser. Any more for the open? James, last one. You, know, you said it's been a tricky week. Uh, <laughs> has it become harder this summer to attract players to Liverpool, do you think? I'm not sure if that's something to do with Liverpool, to be honest. And it's not, not too hard to attract. No, not to attract. To <laughs> that Everything is more difficult. Everything. So there are reasons, and you all know them. It's a, the problem is just... Uh, whatever I say now about that, you probably wrote it already, these kind of stories or not, but whatever I will say now about it, but it's it's really difficult. There are a lot of things that, that are different this year or since last year as well already. Um, some clubs have just a different way to do it and nobody understands 100% how it works, but it's somehow so far it works and it's, you have, as a normal club, it's really difficult to to yeah, to catch up with them. It's, it's really like, wow, okay. Well, then go for it, um, and you just watch it and what, what they are doing. That that's fine. It's not that's not my problem. I don't blame anybody. It's just how it is. Um, so Saudi Arabia, on top of that, made things not easier. So we talk now about it, and it, our window ends in 31st of August, and then I think the window there is still open. So 
a player is not happy or whatever, then they will come again or, 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 or with even bigger offers. So I'm not sure three weeks ago anybody would have thought Neymar goes there or two weeks ago or one week ago now he's there as well. Yes, it's much more difficult. Um, everybody who's interested in the in the way, not everything is most perfect, it's perfect in this European football or wider football, the traditional, where the big leagues are, stuff like this, and it's not yeah, it's not written in stone that always everybody has to watch to, to the Premier League or everybody has to watch the Bundesliga or, or, or La Liga or Baba. So it's absolutely fine if there grows another league. That's how it is, it's still football, it's fine. We don't we don't have the right to say that's not allowed. China tried it. USA maybe still trying, it's absolutely fine, it's it's no problem. But the endless money causes a problem. That, that's that's how it is. Because we just sit here and okay, what can we do now? Um, and it would be cool if somebody could find just a solution, a little bit uh, regulation. <laughs> I don't know. I have no time to think about it. I have obviously other things to do. Um, but yes, it became more difficult. But not to convince players to go to Liverpool. I don't think so. We one hundred percent. If I would have called. I don't know. A million players, they all would have come here immediately. It's just you have to. We have to make sure um, that you go for the right ones. From our point of view, then for our timing is different than other timings because we cannot just um, spend and have a look later. That's how it is, and it's all fine. It's absolutely fine. I sit here and I'm really happy with the uh, with the transfer window in this moment. So our transfer window in this moment, and I know what happened last week, and I know how football fans are, and I know that they would prefer to bring in a player who is 110 or 150 or whatever million, and that your club can do that. That's kind of nice, but in the end, the pitch has the same size. The player will not grow with uh, with the money he costs. It's rather the other way around. So, um, yeah. I'm really happy for the moment. We will keep watching, we will keep looking, we will try with all we have to make the, the best decisions for this club and and then we will not use money or anything else as an excuse for one second. We will just go for it with all we have and that's the idea. We got, but now it's a transfer window obviously and uh, that's why we talk about it. Right? Um, but it's fine. It's how it is, and we do it our way. And we are here, and we are ready to fight. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.